Sport now and a British Army officer who's just spent the past four months planning military support for the Commonwealth Games is this weekend returning to compete in a sport he loves motor racing. Captain Farad Daba from 3 Regiment RLC is competing in the latest round of the BMW Compact Cup at Silverstone. John Knighton has been to see him practicing ahead of the race. Farad Daba has been itching to get back behind the wheel in competition. For the last 16 weeks he's been in Scotland as Deputy Chief of Staff for all the military personnel drafted in to support the Glasgow Commonwealth Games. But when it comes to competing himself, he's much more at home out on a motor racing circuit than an athletics track, especially if it's Silverstone. When I'm, uh, when I'm it, it sounds so cliche to say this, uh, you know, but when you're behind the wheel, uh, but when you are behind the wheel, absolutely nothing else matters. You know, it, it is the car in front, and that's it. Uh, you know, and you, you, you concentrate on what you're doing, and you just you just get on with it. And um, it's such a it's such a thrill, um, but it's hard work, you know, for, for, for one race, um, for one race weekend, where you have a qualifying session of 15, 20 minutes, and then, and then two race sessions of about 15 minutes, which is about total 45 minutes of driving behind the wheel. Um, you know, that, that's, that's an entire week spent, that's probably a good eight hours on the car just prepping it, and that's if you don't crank it, uh, or, or get any knocks, except when anything goes wrong. So, it's a lot of getting ready for something small, but the, the, the prize at the end, you know, uh, it is worth it. Just, just that finishing line and, you know, aim for the podium, improving what you did next time. A lot of what you learn in the military and the self-discipline and, 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 you know, the, 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 these are traits that, that, that soldiers will have anyway. And it's a matter of just adapting that and letting them realise that actually this is something that can be done. This is something that's affordable uh, and it's something that is definitely within reach. He founded his own motorsports team, ZRD Racing, several years ago. But working as a one-man band, building, preparing, servicing and competing in his BMW, it's tough going at this level. And last year he was invited to join a bigger team. His results surged, jumping from 14th place to 4th in his first race with them. Now team boss Andy Waters says Farad's a real talent. He's got a lot of potential, he's a lot of commitment, very focused well disciplined which is you can really get a lot of information off him regarding setup we're, we're, we're getting we have some good results we've had some already so we're looking forward to this weekend he admits motorsport isn't the cheapest of sports to get into but argues it can be done on a budget especially as help is available from the army at the end of the day any hobby or anything you're passionate about can, can become expensive. Motorsport is probably uh, definitely up there, but it's not as expensive as people think. You know, um, I race in the uh, in the BMW Compact Cup. And, uh, I'm a recognised uh, uh, national championship, and, and the uh, you know the army have been have been in um, motorsports uh, is, is included on the fixtures of this, so I can actually call this representation of sports. Brilliant. The Armed Forces Race Challenge, which also happens at the same time. Uh, is you know, and it, it, this is about getting kids and soldiers uh, in, 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 into sport, and it's not that expensive because if you buy, if you build your own vehicle, and to get it onto the track, you know, uh, you're probably looking at around about four thousand pounds to be able to get a car built competitively and put onto a track. Now, if you take four thousand pounds of a year. Uh, I would suggest that golf fees uh, and the potential uh, bar bills after a rugby match could probably equate to something near that as well. So, you know, it, it's, it's all sorts of courses. Apart from the backing of his regiment, he also has an understanding family. Captain Darber hopes that when he eventually leaves the army, he'll be able to work in the motorsports industry, though not necessarily as a driver. This weekend, though, he has his sights firmly set on success here at the home of British Motor Racing. John Myson, Forces News. Silverstone. Well, it's a big weekend for motorsports here in the UK and here at Silverstone. The BMW Compact Cup has its latest round and uh, Captain Farad Darber is with me. Uh, Farad, obviously you're competing uh, this weekend uh, in your I BMW did. and uh, great to see you. You've been very busy, I think, over the last few months on other duties. Tell us about that first. I have, yeah, actually. I was, um, I was up in, uh, in, in Glasgow uh, assisting with the, uh, with the Commonwealth Games. As the, uh, as the as a Dixie Chief of Staff for Operation Comet, which is the uh, military's commitment. So uh, yeah, it was it was really exciting to be amongst such kind of you know uh, sporting prowess and, and being involved with doing our small bit, you know, with, with ensuring that uh, we could deliver a safe and secure games and support for these Scotland. So it was it was really really good. But it was it's nice to be back. <laughs> well, I was going to say nice to be back. You've obviously been uh, testing over the weekend here as well. Uh, first time back in the car for a while. How does it feel? 
Uh, well, if you'd seen the first couple of laps, <laughs> it's been a while. Uh, yeah, Brown's Hatch back in March was the last time that uh, I was able to, to fit around him. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, deployed out to, to Glasgow, get on with the Commonwealth Games, that's finished, we're back in now, back with Iron Motorsport, and back hopefully trying to, trying to battle for, a, you know, for uh, some top spaces, we'll see. Well, tell us how you got into uh, this in the first place, into motorsport. Uh, well, the um, Army Motorsport has uh, sports car racing, which has been around for about two years now. Um, and I started in the BMW Compact Cup Championship uh, back in 20. Uh, when it was only a, a series. Uh, once it turned into a championship, uh, it, was, it was really, really good actually because the uh, armament sport and the fixtures uh, 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 sports Lottery control board just said that because of the level that I'm racing at being a national series, it allowed me to, 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 to basically have an army motorsport. Um, and obviously with the television deal that we have, uh, and it gets a lot of press, it promotes the army. As you can see, the livery of the car being kind of, you know, uh, DPN, I have a a lot, a lot of I'm a big gazebo bringing me with armament sports. So I try and push it forward, um, and and I was just very very lucky that this exists within the military, and I can actually do it as part of army life. And you're obviously very keen, you know, for other soldiers uh, to really take on motorsports. No, you? absolutely. I'm the driver development officer for sports car racing in, in the uh, in the army, uh, which is basically the first port of call is me. If you, you know, you, you, there's a website you go to, and it comes to me. I'll explain to you how to get to the grid because it might seem like it's very, very difficult and very hard to do. And it might seem like it's really expensive because obviously it's motorsport and, 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 and it can be expensive. But, you know, relatively speaking, uh, if you buy a car and you build it yourself, um, with the uh, opportunities that are available to you through Army Motorsport uh, with certain manufacturers and, and help that it can be provided, you can probably you can build a car and get to the grid uh, for about four thousand pounds, or just buy one ready built. Now, if you take in the yearly account of golf fees and maybe the bar bill after a rugby night every Saturday, you probably get somewhere close to that. So it's actually not that bad. Um, you know, the the, uh, the the Armed Forces Race Challenge that we race in, that I race in as well, that is on, that is a, a separate to this, is index linked. So depending on your rank depends on how much you actually pay. Now. A lot of guys like to drive fast and they want to get out on track with their own car. That can actually cost you more than if you had a race car and entered competitions if you do it via the army. So the opportunity is there and it's really fantastic. And uh, so we're here at Silverstone, yeah. which is the home of British Motor Racing. It is indeed. And uh, not very long ago, Lewis Hamilton won the British Grand Prix. He's obviously competing this weekend in Belgium. The difference obviously is massive between the sort of sport that you're doing, but there again, you know, looking around at the teams today, you know, the mechanics are really talented. It's where everyone starts. The, the only difference between uh, between Formula One and, and grassroots racing would be the, obviously the standard of racing is a lot, lot higher and the money is a lot, lot larger. But if you strip back all of that, and ultimately it's it's a it's a racing driver sitting in a vehicle, yeah, pushing that vehicle to the limit of what that vehicle is capable of doing inches from other people in other vehicles uh, then that's actually very very similar you know the the what you the, the risk that you put yourself under in one of these uh, is equivalent to, to in, in in regards to what you do to anything and be that formula one or british toy car or anything else it's it's, it's very you know it, it's all going to be the same and the talent of the guys that are here is just absolutely phenomenal um, they uh, they understand the concept of, uh, of, of racing, they understand what we're here to do, because ultimately we're not professionals. This is a hobby, it's grassroots racing, but you wouldn't know it uh, when you come into the pit lanes and you see how professional the setup is and how friendly people are and the fact that you know, ultimately people run their livelihoods off of, off of doing this uh, you know, full time. And I just find that that's something that you're very interested in doing, isn't it? Uh, uh, maybe would yeah, you leave the army getting involved in motorsport? Potentially. I mean, I started this, uh, this, this, this the, the team that I have, ZRD Racing, named after my son, Zach. Um, because it's something that potentially, you know, with a logistic background, motorsport, it, it definitely kind of pulls together. And, uh, and it's something that I would like to get involved with. You know, I, I was once told as a young boy by my father that if you get paid to do your hobby, you'll never work a day in your life. So there's something potentially that I may be for when I finish my time, you know, serving Her Majesty. Okay, well, good luck, uh, obviously, for this weekend and the rest of the season. Well, thanks, John. Great to see you, and obviously a lot of sport going on this weekend, and we wish uh, Farad all the very best here at Silverstone. The Sun, proud sponsors of Forces TV.